Welcome to the Jaguar Football Show with Coach Dawson Odoms, where we bring you all the exciting action of the Southern University football program. It's brought to you by Coca-Cola, Louisiana Lottery, Healthy Blue, the Communities of Color Network Tobacco-Free Living, and Jerry Lane Chevrolet. Hello and welcome to week five of the Jaguar Football Show with Coach Dawson Odoms, where we bring you all the exciting action of the Southern University football program. We come to you each week from Martha's Bistro, located at 19900 Old Scenic Highway in Zachary, Louisiana. We invite you to come out about 12 o'clock on a Monday, catch the show, have a delicious meal, and talk some Southern football with Coach and I after we do the show. Of course, you can catch us on TV about five times a week as the graphic shows you. And you can also catch us on Facebook and our uh, Instagram page, Twitter page. Coach, another tough game for the Jaguars in Lorman, Mississippi as we open SWAC play. Final score, 48-31. But Coach, a tough loss, even tougher loss, is the injury to Randall Menard. We lose him with a broken leg for the season. Well, exactly. You know, I thought the guys had an opportunity to win a football game. We, we had some chances in the first half that we, we just didn't take advantage of. And you can't allow good football teams to hang around. We could have created some separation. And you know, you're right. Randall Menard went down uh, with a broken leg and we're going to miss him the rest of the season. And we just wish him a speedy recovery. But, you know, that injury at that point in time is a 10 point football game. We had a chance to kick a field goal to cut it to one. Uh, you can see the life out of those guys, man. It's tough when you see something like that happen. Uh, you got to regroup, refocus, and you got to try to go back out and play. But it's an unfortunate accident. It's a part of the game, and we know he'll make a full recovery. Coach, we did get back injured quarterback Austin Howard. He had a valiant night, 274 yards through the air, two touchdowns, but it wasn't enough. And there were a couple of drops, as well as some other miscues. If you could have that night back, I know you wish you could. Well, you know, you get 60 minutes and you guarantee 60 minutes and you got to do your best in those 60 minutes. And I, I really think we left some plays out there. Uh, you know, you're going to see once we get to the highlights, we, we missed some plays in the second half. Some guys went down. You know, those injuries are starting to catch up. You know, in the second half, we had guys continue to have to shuffle in and out of the lineup, which led to some guys down the line having to go out there and play. And they didn't execute, you know, at a high enough level for us to win a football game. Coach, how is Austin's knee doing? Well, you know, he's average. You know, today he's, he's very sore, and, you know, we won't know if he's going to play this week until we get to Thursday. So it's day by day, get him as much rehab as possible. We know the plan that we have in place for him, but hopefully he'll be able to go. We'll gauge it on Thursday and Friday and see how he feel on Saturday. Well, there you have it. Let's jump into those first half highlights, Coach, and show the folks exactly what happened on the reservation in Lorman, Mississippi. Always a tough venue for us. Here you see Ben running for 11. We, we ultimately had to punt there, but Beard catches one. He catches another one. Menard's going to catch one for 19. Howard gets hit. He's going to come up a little gimpy. We ultimately end this drive, Coach, with a field goal by uh, Caesar for 35 yards to start the scoring off. Well, you know, it was great protection, and, you know, we give him time, and if I, operation is great, we got a pretty good field goal kick in true freshman season. Alcorn gets the ball, quarterback rolls out, Footman tosses the ball, and there he is, Danny Johnson, with one of the highlight plays of the year and only the fourth game. That kid is destined for greatness, Coach, at another level. Well, he's a playmaker, and, you know, in games like this, I... Our good guys got to make plays, and boy, he's one of them good guys, and what a play right there. Our editor said he thought that was a better catch than the Odell Beckham catch. Well, there you see Ben rushing for 17. Ben takes one for eight. And then we have an interception, Coach. Uh, one just got away from Howard, huh? Well, you know, the guy's open, but you got to put a little on that ball. Didn't see the underneath linebacker, and that comes with timing. You know, you hadn't been out there to get your reps, so you tried to force one in. We had an opportunity there. We get the ball back ultimately, and uh, Howard tosses one to Ben. Ben takes it for 27 yards. This kid is really improving, Coach. Every day he comes to work, you know, and I think if you come to work every day, you got a chance to get better. Dylan Beard catches one for a first down. Howard got a receiver. 
Hoover open, but overthrown. Right here, Howard just missed one, Coach. It's actually a penalty. Yeah, it was pass interference. They called us for a pick. Okay. Alcorn gets the ball back. They punt. Shank, eight yards. We get the ball back. Howard hits Ben for 23 in the flat. Man, it's just great effort, and you can see, man, God wanted to score a touchdown. Coach, Ben has become the number one running back with Herb Edwards out. Here you see him taking it in for a touchdown. We get on the board. Score is 10-3 at this juncture. How is Herb Edwards doing, Coach? Oh, Herb is back. He played some in this football game, and you know, he's going to continue to play. But Ben is playing outstanding football, and... You know, he's real hot right now. He's one of the playmakers, and once the ball's in his hand, he gives us a chance to make some plays. Okay. Alcorn gets the ball back. You see him right there. Sheer will. He takes one into the end zone. We get the ball back. Austin Howard. He hits, uh, was that? Um, the Randall Menard. Menard for a first down. Coach, from the fan perspective, they had to enjoy this game. A lot of back and forth. There you see us scoring again. Yeah, that's a touchdown by Dennis Craig, man. Another guy that's got to step up and make plays in the absence of Randall Menard. We got an excessive celebration in that, Coach. What happened right there? Well, they say he threw the football up into the uh, sta uh, up into the hill. Uh, looked like he just released it, but they called it for unsportsmanlike. Okay. Well, there you have it. First half is over. When we come back, we'll look at the second half of the Alcorn State game on the Jaguar Football Show with Coach Dawson Odoms. The biggest scratch-off game of the season is here. It's Saints Game On from the Louisiana Lottery. Your chance to win up to $100,000. Scratch the back for an extra game. Enter the second chance drawings for VIP suite experiences, a deluxe limo experience, a tunnel team experience, official autograph team merchandise, and the grand prize, a 2018 season ticket package. Play Saints Game On from the Louisiana Lottery for your chance to make this your winning season. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling Jaguar football show with Coach Dawson Odoms. Coach, we're up 24-20 at the half. What did you tell your team coming out of the locker room? Well, you know, we got to go play. We know that they're going to be an aggressive football team. They're going to try to run the football. They, we let them back in the football game. We had a chance to create some separation. So you got to get ready to go fight for 30 minutes because it's going to come down to whichever team can impose his will. Coach, on the defensive side of the ball, we're giving up a lot of points. And on this night, we gave up a lot of yards. Alcorn running back Delance Turner rushed for 272 yards, second most in Alcorn history. That's not a good indicator for the Jaguar defense. No, nah, not at all. You know, we got to get better at run defense, at run fits, at, at the structure of what we're doing. And, you know, guys are not, not in the right place. And, you know, once we go to sub and late in the, late in the game, you know, coming out of halftime, we had to sub some guys because they had some long drives, and then once those guys go in there, they're not fitting the run very well. But we're looking at what we're doing, got to revamp some things, but you know, we got to stop the run. That's, that's very unacceptable, and we got to get better, and we're going to work this week to make sure we fix those problems. Well, let's jump into second half highlights and show the folks exactly what happened on the reservation. Right here, Footman keeps for a nice gainer. Takes it in. Missed tackle there. On this play, Coach, looks like Howard's pass was tipped, and uh, Howard actually had to knock it down from preventing it from being intercepted. Yeah, nice, nice head up play right there. We have a punt. Yeah, this is not a head up play. You know, it's a bad kick, and you gotta, you just gotta take what you can get, and you know, luckily we take it out of bounds onto the ball right yeah. there. 
but we pinned deep. Was that a fumble on that play, oh, They called him down and said his elbow was down. The elbow was down. Here, Aaron Tiller's making a heck of a play by himself. That young man's having a good season for you, Coach. He come to play every day. He come to work every day, and he's reaping those benefits. And, and that's the thing, you know, you got to be in position. Here you see Dennis Craig catching a 37-yarder. Young man making a name for himself. Well, he's a guy we got to get the ball so he can make some things happen. And, you know, he came up a little gimpy right there himself. Ben takes one up the gut for 25 yards. Coach, this is the play where Menard injured himself. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty. Was it, was it just a misstep on the field? or? No, I think he got rolled up on, and, okay. and that's what created it. Well, there you see the Jaguars having a uh, blocked field goal attempt. Alcorn gets the ball back. Their guy does some nifty footwork and escaping some tackles. Uh, there's a great defensive play by Simmons for a loss. We get the ball back. Ben rushes for 11. Ben comes back, rushes for 16. That young man is doing some tough sledding, Coach. Well, he's definitely doing a great job with the football, and he's giving us a chance, that's for sure. We punted. And then they had to punt, and Danny Johnson does his magic. He returns one for 39 yards. Coach, this guy can give you the opportunity to put the ball in the end zone anytime he touches it. Well, he's definitely one of our better football players, and we, got, we find ways to try to get him involved in the football game. You saw Howard get sacked there. Then Turner for Alcorn takes one up the gut for 50. End of the ball game. We lose our first swag game. When we come back, we're going to talk to Danny Johnson and Austin Howard on the Coca-Cola Player Interviews and wrap up the Alcorn State game on the Jaguar Football Show with Coach Dawson Odom. Stay with us. I have two kids, and like any mom, I want them to be healthy. So I chose Healthy Blue for our Healthy Louisiana plan. We get all our Medicaid benefits and pharmacy and prescription drug coverage. But you know what I really like? I get rewards for taking my kids to their doctor visits. Choose Healthy Blue. Call 1-855-229-6848 today. That's 1-855-229-6848. Diseases from smoking kill more African Americans each year than car crashes, AIDS, and murders combined. In the U.S., about one in five African American adults smoke cigarettes. It's estimated that each cigarette you smoke shortens your life by seven minutes. That's seven minutes less to spend time with people you love doing what you love each time you smoke a cigarette. Is it worth it? Smoking affects us all. Hi, I'm Coach Dawson Odoms, and if you're looking for a great new or used car, Jerry Lane Chevrolet invites you to come and check them out. Whatever your taste in vehicle is, they got a great lineup to fit your style, and most importantly, your budget. Personally, they're taking care of me with this great truck. I'm a big guy, and this a big truck. It's roomy and comfortable, and it has to get up and go when I need to get up and go. So remember, whatever your taste in vehicles, come visit us at Jerry Lane Chevrolet. Go Jags! Welcome back to the Jaguar Football Show with Coach Dawson Odoms. Of course, each week in this segment, we name our Alpha Media Players of the Week on offense, defense, and special teams. Coach, who are the Alpha Media Players of the Week this week? Well, on offense, it was a guy getting his first start. Big Josie Harris started for us at tackle. Did an outstanding job. He's the Offensive Player of the Week. Defense, a guy that's always been there. You know, he come to play every week, Aaron Tiller. And special teams, a guy that really gave us a chance to flip some field. Uh, Danny Johnson, those are the Alpha Media Players of the Week. Coach, after the game, Joe Dupree and Howard White caught up with our quarterback, Austin Howard, and the cornerback, uh, Danny Johnson, and filed this Coca-Cola interview for this show. 
We're tied. We're here with our quarterback back from injury. Austin Howard. Austin, great game tonight. Didn't come out the way we wanted it to. You put 31 points on the board. How you feeling? How does the rhythm feel? I mean, you know, I feel like I picked up where I left off. Uh, I mean, it just ain't went our way tonight. You know, we'll get back, get back in the lab and just keep getting better. Well, definitely looking good as you came out. Surprised all of us to see you starting with Swag's play. Y'all came out and was really handling the Braves until the second quarter. Did you lose a little rhythm in the second quarter? Oh, no, man. You know, uh, offensive stall a lot. You know, I mean, you know, it's not just us that stall. You know, everybody stalls once in a while. So, I mean, we just got to keep getting better. We're going to get to practice, get back on them drawing boards, and keep getting better on the little things. We're here with the man that really set us on fire tonight. You had an interception that was worthy of ESPN. I guarantee is going to be in the top 10. Danny, you went up for that ball. How did that feel? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't even know I caught it. I was just trying to make a play on the ball. You know, it was a guy running free. And when I saw the ball going out, I was just thinking, man, go make a play for the team and get us some energy. You made a play for real. Now, listen, the defense looks sharp. Y'all really coming back. I know the outcome wasn't the way we wanted. As we move on and swag play, what can we expect from the dog day defense? Man, we just got to keep building. You know, we got to keep communicating as a whole. We got to all got to be on the same page. You know, we kind of gave up, you know, a lot of plays, um, missed tackles. So we really got to correct that. So, but that's something we can always get better on. You know, we'll take that one under the belt, but we got to build from here. And you heard it right here on the Jaguar Football Show. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Austin. Coach, let's wrap up some Alcorn State talk. What did you take from the Alcorn State game, which will help us in the SWAC race for the rest of the year? Well, you know, I think we can score on offense, and, you know, it's all about run defense. And if we can get our run defense under control, score some points on offense, got a long season in front of us, we got a chance to get some success. You know, this group of guys just need to taste victory, and, you know, we got a chance. We're back at home, feel like we haven't played at home in such a long time. But we're back at home this weekend. We got a chance to win a football game and got a chance to play better and fix some things. So I look forward to this team being very competitive going down the stretch. Well, when Coach is talking about back at home, this Saturday we play Fort Valley State, a team we've not played traditionally. Uh, they're from Georgia, and we come back. We'll look at the Fort Valley State Wildcats on the Jaguar Football Show with Coach Dawson Odoms. Stay with us. Back to the Jaguar Football Show, where we come to you each week uh, from Martha's Bistro, located at 19900 Old Scenic Highway in uh, Zachary, Louisiana. We invite you to come out. I think today I'm going to have the baked chicken with a couple of sides, like collard greens and black eyed peas and cornbread, and that'll set me off right. Come check out their food. It's always great. You can't go wrong. Coach, jumping back into some football, we step out of swag play this week, and we play. Fort Valley State Wildcats from Fort Valley, Georgia. The Wildcats are one and two this season, coming off a 31-28 win over Benedict College. What do we know about the Wildcats, and how did the Wildcats end up on our schedule? Well, you know, we had a chance to try to get a home game and, you know, try to fill in one of those uh, slots, and they were available, so the dates matched up. Uh, the biggest thing with them is, is that they, they have some offensive ability. You know, they're deep at the running back position. Uh, good offensive line. They got rod receivers, uh, quarterbacks to transfer from Mississippi Valley State. Everything starts with him. He spreads the ball around. You know, if they want to, you know, they I think they really want to run the football. And 
based on our run defense, uh, it's, it's got to be something we fix because we can't allow a team to come into our house and rush the football like this just past week. Defensively, they get in there 4 2 5. They love to keep their backers in the box. Uh, they try to keep it very simple. They try to tackle in space, and you know, it ought to be some plays there for our running backs to be able to make. But at the end of the day, you know, this football game is about uh, Southern University coming out and playing like we're capable of playing from start to finish. If we do that, everything ought to take care of itself. Fort Valley State, are they in the MEAC or the SIAC conference? Uh, they're in the SIAC. SIAC? Okay, well, there you have it. Um, Coach, anything that Fort Valley has shown you uh, that really, really has uh, concern for your team this weekend, either on the, at the run or from their quarterback play? Well, I mean, he's a dual threat guy. You know, he's a guy that we've seen before. You know, again, I say he transferred from Mississippi Valley State. Uh, left hand quarterback, you know, they got to understand their RPO offense. Uh, they're going to, they like to check their plays from the sideline. You know, we got to just do a great job of, of fitting the run. You know, that's where it goes start. If you do that, everything else will take care of itself. So, I look for us to be a little bit more aggressive in our, in our play calling offensively. And look for us to be a little bit more aggressive in our play calling on defense. Got a couple of wide receivers they try to stretch the field with. But, you know, our secondary and our, and our linebacker core, we just got to play better. And if we do that, uh, like I said, everything will take care of itself. Well, good luck with that Fort Valley game. And when we come back, we're going to wrap up this week's edition of the Jaguar Football Show with Coach Dawson Odoms. I have two kids, and like any mom, I want them to be healthy. So I chose Healthy Blue for our Healthy Louisiana plan. We get all our Medicaid benefits and pharmacy and prescription drug coverage. But you know what I really like? I get rewards for taking my kids to their doctor visits. Choose Healthy Blue. Call 1-855-229-6848 today. That's 1-855-229-6848. Diseases from smoking kill more African Americans each year than car crashes, AIDS, and murders combined. In the U.S., about one in five African American adults smoke cigarettes. It's estimated that each cigarette you smoke shortens your life by seven minutes. That's seven minutes less to spend time with people you love doing what you love each time you smoke a cigarette. Is it worth it? Smoking affects us all. Hi, I'm Coach Dawson Odoms, and if you're looking for a great new or used car, Jerry Lane Chevrolet invites you to come and check them out. Whatever your taste in vehicle is, they got a great lineup to fit your style, and most importantly, your budget. Personally, they're taking care of me with this great truck. I'm a big guy. And this a big truck. It's roomy and comfortable, and it has to get up and go when I need to get up and go. So remember, whatever your taste in vehicles, come visit us at Jerry Lane Chevrolet. Go Jags! Welcome back to the Jaguar Football Show with Coach Dawson Odoms. Of course, we want you to come out this weekend on the bluff have a good showing for the Fort Valley State game. You can always get your tickets from Aretha and the ladies in the ticket office. The ticket office number is 225-771-3171. Coach, talk about what it means to the kids when a stadium is full of people cheering for them on a Saturday in Jaguar and uh, A.W. Mumford Stadium. Well, it's home field advantage, and you sort of see the atmosphere that we had. You know, Jaguar Nation was very supportive up at up on the reservation, but you can see the kind of environment that it creates. And, you know, I, I really think that's what pushed their guys in the second half. Once they got the momentum, you could see the crowd really get behind them. But it was great because Jaguar Nation was behind us, man. I hear them back there chanting for the defense. And now we're going to play at home at A.W. Mumford Stadium. It is definitely a home field advantage when it's, when it's loud and it's full. And, that's what you want. You know, you want to be able to put people in your seats, and we look forward to the crowd coming out supporting the Jaguars against Fort Valley State. Coach, let's talk about the offense for a little bit. Uh, you've been doing what? Probably 60 40 run pass. Yeah. Uh, any more plans to pass it a little bit more uh, moving forward? 
Well, we threw it, you know, 45 times Saturday. Okay. So, you know, um, I think we take what it is. All our plays are pretty much run past options. We're, we're reading. It's a count system. So, you know, we're trying to read what the defense give us, take what they give us. If they load the box on the run, then we'll throw the ball. If we, you know, if they try to take the pass away, then we'll run the ball. So that's where RPO come from. We'll run pass option offense. And, you know, we got to catch the ball and throw the ball when it's there. And we got to be able to block when there's some running, when there's some running lanes there. But collectively, we got to play well as a football team to try to take the pressure off each phase by playing well together. When we get the short field, we got to turn it into points. And we didn't do that on Saturday. On the defensive side of the ball, Coach, we talked about it earlier. A lot of yards given up, a lot of points. Any changes in the defense, any scheme changes that the fans can look forward to to try to stop some of that uh, uh, production from the other teams on us? Well, yeah, we rebound some things. We, we met on Sunday, and, you know, we're, we're looking at a lot of different things that we got to do. Looking at, first of all, who's doing it, you yeah. know, and, and then Personnel. we got to look at what we're doing. And, yeah try to make sure we get our guys in a better position to make plays. It's, I mean, it's, it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch teams go up and down the field running the football. And, you know, pride got to kick in from the coaches, from the players. And you can rest assured we're working on fixing all our problems and, and try to get this football team playing much better going down the stretch. Fatigue also is a factor on the defense when they're out there for a long time, Coach. Well, not only fatigue, just no, the depth. When I mean, mm -hmm. you don't have the depth at certain positions, and then you got to play a lot of plays, it adds up. We ran 84 plays on offense, and they ran 63. When you see that variety, you feel like as a coach you should win that football game. But, they, again, it's the big plays. It's not that they're running the ball. It's that they're, you're allowing big plays to happen, and we just can't allow big plays to happen if we want a chance to win football games. Coach, when you talk about the um, season that we've had, a lot of young players have gotten a chance. Uh, how does that factor into where we are? Uh, are you happy with the progress that the freshmen and some of the new names and faces on the team have given the team? Well, you know, when you're facing scholarship reductions, it's kind of hard to to have that the depth, you know, the quality of depth. and. You know, we only sign like 10, 11 guys because you don't have those extra scholarships to be able to sign 16 or 20 guys. You know, in a class, you can get about 30 guys. So when you're only signing 11, you're going to be limited. A lot of those backups are, are walk-ons, and we're asking a lot of them to go in and, and play, you know, up to par. But that's coaching. We got to be able to take the guys that we have, get them in position, and then they got to make plays when they're in position. A lot of times we just miss tackles. I think in this football game, we miss, we miss so many tackles that led to second, ch second chance opportunities for yards, those yards after contact, and you can't win like that. Well, of course, we're going to wrap up this show by showing you the times that the show comes on. Uh, as well as the graphic with the, uh, well, actually we're just going to tell you, Go Jags! Go Jags! <laughs>